Well, welcome to our first live panel discussion of the day, where we are discussing how to practice lean facilities management. Now, the panel here today will explore if Lean FM is the way to go and how reduced revenues or increased client expectations can be coped with. Before we get into the discussion, I would first like to introduce our panel here today. We have here with us Mr. Charlie Lampur, the General Manager of Al Sharavi Facilities Management. Also joining us in this panel is Mr. Tamir Bishay, the Business Development Manager, Concordia. And we also have with us Mr. Naganand Lakshmanan, the Director of the FMS Division of Imdad. And also joining us today is Mr. Tariq Nizamuddin, the Senior Executive Director from Ijada. The session is moderated by Mr. Matthew Myers, the Assistant Professor Real Estate from Harriet Watts University. So viewers, please note that the Q&A will be held in the last 10 minutes of the discussion. And we do have the networking lounge where you can take the discussion post the session. Over to you, Mr. Matthew. Hey, great. Welcome all. I'm glad you guys are spending your afternoon here. Uh, sometimes afternoon sessions are not the, the ones that, uh, if you just had a big meal, it might put you to sleep. So hopefully we keep you awake, we keep you engaged. Um, we have four experts here on facilities management. We had a great chat beforehand. Uh, and again, these are the experts on this, the topic. I'm a moderator, so I'm going to let these guys do the main talking. You don't need to listen to me much. So I'm just going to put out the first question to the group here. What are some actions that a facilities management company can do to ensure that you're meeting your clients' expectations during this time of this pandemic where you have work-related reduced revenues and resources? Anybody want to speak up? I'll let you guys go for it. I don't mind. Uh, I can speak up. Please. Go for it, Tamar. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Um, there is no doubt that the pandemic had a tremendous impact on, on everyone on, and on everything we have been doing for the past nine months. Um, since the requirements and the client expectations have changed, accordingly, service providers had to adapt and do things differently. Uh, with regards to reduced manpower and, and resources, um, I think everyone on the panel here would agree that we haven't had a trend across the board of reduction of resources and, and revenue. Um, it had to be specific based on the property type. So if you think about schools, hotels, retail, commercial buildings, yes, occupancy has gone down, um, traffic has been less. But on the other hand, when you look at residential properties, for example, with everyone working from home, you had more people staying in their apartments, you had uh, more visitors, more deliveries coming into buildings. And accordingly, the requirements of the buildings have changed. The assets of the buildings have been operational on much higher capacity than what they used to. And accordingly, you need more cleaners, you need more technicians to be there for reactive, you need more security guards. So yes, definitely there has been a change in the resources and the revenue, but it wasn't a flat base across the board that we have to reduce. No, in some cases, we spoke to our clients about increase because of the demand. Anybody else want to speak up? Yeah. Please. See, uh, you know, the, since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, companies like Imdad, we have quickly adapted to the rapidly evolving situation. You know, the situation was quite dramatic, a lockdown, uh, open, something like that. And we have managed to remain very agile. Like Tamir said, it has given us a tremendous opportunity on certain areas. And in certain areas, there were reductions because people were working from home. The residential uh, buildings have a uh, uh, different requirement, the sanitization requirement, and other things. Uh, companies like Imdad, we are one of the most diversified uh, company. So uh, honestly, we were not uh, affected. There was a small reduction in the uh, top line, but due to our agility and preparedness to serve the customers, uh, actually, uh, I can say uh, 2020 in terms of profit is better than 2019. So certain times, a pandemic creates an opportunity. Once you prepare, you, you have your workforce safe, your business continuity plans intact, and the agility to help the customer in needs, either in addition or reduction. So that really helps. So pandemic was an opportunity in certain areas and reduction in certain areas. From him, that perspective. Great, thank you. Uh, I, uh, sorry. No, go ahead, Derek. Go ahead. Okay. 
I, I totally agree with what the gentleman said. Uh, yes, uh, there is. There were uh, reductions happened in some sectors. Uh, the most affected sectors were uh, aviation and uh, and hotels, obviously. Uh, but uh, hotels picked up quickly with the staycation packages that was offered because a lot of people did not. Uh, were, uh, most of the people were not able to, to able to travel, so they selected to do. Uh, what uh, a new concept called staycation. So hotels, uh, more, a lot of hotels were fully booked uh, during the summer season. Uh, another factor that, uh, in addition to what the gentleman said, um, the business uh, of uh, FM did not stop during the pandemic. Uh, tenders were going on. We received very big awards, uh, and Dad also received very very big awards. A lot, most of the companies were awarded contracts. And mobilization happened during the during the lockdown uh, because our sector is, was exempted from the from uh, the barriers of, of movement. Uh, so the reduction of resources were utilized somewhere else, utilized in new contracts, and utilized. We we also we we have uh, uh, benefited from the opportunity to do uh, condition assessment. The facilities were uh, shut down, so it was an opportunity to do. Uh, proper uh, planned and preventive maintenance uh, uh, for schools, as an example, schools are empty, so you have the freedom to do um, any deferred maintenance or deferred work that was deferred in the past. So it was, uh, I always say, every problem is an opportunity. And the FM sector, uh, to a certain extent, benefited from, from the pandemic. We were not affected as uh, other sectors like they were, they were affected, like uh, aviation, hospitality, retail, of course. Sounds like you had lots of lemons, but you're making lots of lemonade, obviously. Um, In general, I'm very optimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. I always look at the at the big picture. I look at the uh, full full half of the of the glass. I guess. That, that's good to hear. I mean, actually, my background is valuations. We tend to be the other way. We're trying to. Our, our cups are always half empty, so uh, <laughs> it's nice to have the other side of the fence here. Uh, Charles Lampos, hopefully I didn't tear that up too bad. I, I agree with my colleagues to what they said. Uh, every crisis brings both opportunities and, and uh, risks. And uh, we, we also saw this, this, this new era with an optimistic way uh, we approached our clients with compassion and understand because, for example, retails and schools, uh, both sectors where they are drastically affected because they were closed. There was no revenue coming. Uh, there was nothing and the expenses keep going on. So um, we are very proud to say that uh, we haven't had any, any client loss, any portfolio loss during the pandemic because of this compassionate approach to this uh, really, really, uh, in something completely new and and earthquake that that went around the world. So, uh, understanding, compassion, and thinking on a smart way to keep supporting your clients. I think it was uh, the safe way in order to go out of this crisis, which it helped us a lot. Great, thank you. Actually, that that led directly into my next question. So how has your relationship with your clients evolved during this pandemic? Has it improved? Has it worsened? Or have you met in the middle and accepted the way it is? You want uh, any more to add to that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, as, as we see it in, in Al Shirawi, the world has changed and will never be the same again. Uh, but, this is, but this is not bad. We think that uh, what is coming, it is much better. So uh, the, the pandemic made the world actually reevaluate the way they live, they speak, they meet, they do business, they do everything. Look at us right now. Uh, if they were telling us six months ago that we we're gonna do or seven months ago that we we're gonna do a conference through Zoom, we say, no, why we don't meet and discuss? And, and I believe it would be much better if I, I if I see my colleagues in person instead of behind the screen uh, with these backgrounds, which makes me a bit funny with my head by the way uh, so yes everything has changed uh, so the way that we do business also has changed uh, and and technology has helped us find ways to actually 
adjust to the new reality. We were forced to take technology from the development phase and make it a reality and, and, and go through this immaturity stage uh, with, with less pain. Uh, and, and if we think with regards to the client perspective that uh, now we can go back on the way we used to do business today to go back, for us, that would be, an, that would be a, a mistake. There is a new reality, there is new requirements and the client has, has actually uh, changed. Uh, not on what he expects from you, but how he expects that from you. So, uh, as far as uh, as as we uh, as, as as far as Arshirao is 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 concerned, uh, the relationship with the clients remains stable, uh, but it, it it is defined now in a different level, and it is more based on technology than on the traditional way that the firm was doing because. For us, the traditional way that we're doing the FEM, you know, have three people go on fixed day cycling. This is okay, but what is next? And this is where we are focusing now on, on, on what is next in order to offer the services to the client. Okay. But we'll as, that. as far ask as... Tell me later on what, what is next. I need to move uh, on to Tamar. No, we, we need an NDA in order to reply this to you. <laughs> but, okay, but uh, but we are we are very happy to to say that uh, the um, the client retention due to the pandemic reached up to a ninety nine point eight percent. So we are we are very lucky and honored for that. Thank you, Tamir. You want to add to that or? Yeah, I think on the relationship point, going through the pandemic, it really showed the quality of service providers. Um, our job is to maintain properties and assets, right? But the true quality of service provider shows when things go wrong, when not when things are going right. So the differentiator between service providers is when things go wrong, how prepared are you? What's your business continuity plan? What risk assessments do you have in order to ensure that the client continues getting your services as they used to do? I also see the FM role at that point was more of an advisor, not just a service provider, because as we go every day, the regulations were changing. Nobody knew how far the, pandem the, the pandemic is gonna go. And nobody has a set ready manual saying, okay, we have a pandemic here, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do on FM, on cleaning, on security, on maintenance, it was not there. So clients really turned to their FM service providers asking them for help and advice on what we need to do. And I think this is what really showed how good service providers are. And it only made the relationship between the clients and service providers stronger um, if service providers were able to support them during such time. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah Good. Uh, actually, I said that the client uh, service provider relationship, like client in the relationship, has become better. The, the client was able to see value, like my colleague Tamir said, the value in working with uh, certain uh, companies like Mindad or Ijadar, Concordia, Al Shuravi. See, we were able to be agile, we were able to reduce whenever they require, we were able to mitigate uh, the risks for the client. For example, in Imdad, we serve the biggest, we, we serve the Abu Dhabi ports and the Dubai ports. So the container terminals were busy. We serve, we are the biggest market leader in the banking portfolio. The ATMs has to work, the ACs has to work. So the client was became more confident. There were transport restrictions, inter-emirate restrictions, the restrictions changed overnight, uh, NAFE area was closed, but we were able to come up with immediate agility to serve the customer in the worst times, which he, which no one has predicted. So this uh, pandemic has created a uh, more confident. Uh, in certain cases, the clients wanted to reduce drastically the manpower. We have been very supportive. Uh, we have been able to reduce the manpower because they cannot fund, like uh, uh, Charles said, uh, in schools and uh, uh, retail, they want to completely slash down the 80, 90% of the people. The, the advantage we had, if we were able to redeploy the people, helping the uh, clients who are affected uh, financially or there were no revenue, and in clients where they require uh, operations to continue as usual, we were able to deliver uh, technology help. We were able to come up with everything. And that has actually increased the confidence on companies 
and the tech and the relationship has really improved and uh, uh, none of the major company or at least in imdad we have never lost a contract but actually we were able to secure a lot of contracts uh, based on our thing and uh, uh, the existing uh, clients were able to add more portfolio into our uh, contract so actually it should say we, it was an opportunity and i agree with uh, mr tarik like is an uh, optimistic uh, fm is optimistic during this time okay, i appreciate that sir it is uh, i agree with my colleagues 100% it is at the end of the day it's a partnership we believe in partnership in jada we believe our partnership with our clients and uh, we we understand that or what what our clients need I'm, in my previous life i was uh, an fm client and i know that uh, fm clients is looking for flexibility especially in difficult times and this is what big companies demonstrated during the pandemic which strengthens this the, the relationship and the partnership uh, the challenge that you uh in i would like to add to what my colleague said that there is a very important point and the challenge that fm companies may face due this uh, during these difficult times is when the client started to request uh, uh request that you prioritize the quality as an example cancellation of ppm uh this is something that uh, a fm service provider cannot and should not accept this is this is the main challenge that can face but if you are selective with your client you know that clients will not uh, good clients will not ask for this uh, you don't want to save money for 3 months and uh, replace the asset after one year which will cost you much much more much more on that exactly. so this is where the role of the advisory that Tamir mentioned uh, the, 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 the our role as an advisor as a partner with our uh, with our clients to give them the right advice that yes you are saving 20000 here but this will cost you 1 million after 3 years thank you uh tark uh, let me ask you the next question is um well, I'm an academic we'd like to have these theories and stuff is there particular types of processes that you use to do lean fm any particular main program six sigma or any of that stuff and has that changed over the last couple of years I I I don't uh, it's a it's a difficult question to answer uh, especially in a, in a in a public forum okay uh but of course every every fm service provider will use the the expertise and will use the portfolio and the specialty of the team each company is special than the other uh, to offer the right solution that will cater the the client need uh from operation perspective from quality perspective and from price uh, and commercial uh, commercial target uh, we we are very selective with our clients we only de- deal with uh, uh, clients that understand the added value of fm not a, a client that's looking for a traditional maintenance company and uh, and we are, yeah and we do, this is how we, we we are offering the right solution for the, for them i appreciate you may ask why i'm put on the spot Uh, uh actually this pandemic has forced to think on the uh, six sigma and the lean management for example i can see the, there was a transport restriction earlier my bus used to carry say 15 people after this pandemic i have to transport four or five people based on the emirate and the based of the law on the other hand my client is uh, uh, li- looking at the same cost or even at the reduced cost because his business is affected so the situation evolved every day so we are forced to serve the client and he is a very good partner like tarik said we work as a partnership so we understand the client requirement whereas the local law the regulation states the transport has to be in different buses so so we were this forced us to come with uh, processes and lean management and uh, uh, the increase in the productivity of the staff uh, so actually every uh, every situation like this help us to evolve in the, in in case of technology like uh, charlampur said uh the adoptability or the usage of technology got amplified we were uh, looking at uh, better ways in, in managing the transport or managing the technician because there were restrictions in recruitment whereas we were winning jobs so there was no uh, resources available how to incentivize the resource or how to get the best of the resource uh, so all these things every like 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 tarik said we cannot be very specific about every organization but this gave us a lot of opportunity and uh, to improve in various areas okay i if 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 i may add something here 
I believe not only in, in FM business, but in, in every business in general, the, the organizations that survive are the organization where the previous years have invested in technology, in processes, in learning and upskilling their people. So they had the resources and, and they acted quick in order to adjust to the crisis. And, and, uh, and, and I believe this is why we are here now, because al Shirawi and also the three other respected or organizations, they have long experience in the UA market uh, on the seven level of, of quality and, and, uh, and processes. And, and this is why we are here. It is, it, it is simple. If you don't invest in your organization, anything can happen, can destroy you. Come here. Um, so just answering a question about the, the academic part and certification and all that, I think everybody on the panel, they have everything it takes uh, from accreditation to give the best service possible out there. It just the way, the way you, you, you advise your client on your service delivery makes a lot of difference. Uh, I think for the longest time, everyone has been shouting about output spec approach rather than input spec approach. Uh, going on a uh, shared model or portfolio management of assets rather than looking at every property individually. All these methods have been talked about for a very long time, but the implementation has been always very low because the market was not much in demand for it. Few clients understood and they were looking for it, but it wasn't as much as demand as, as we wanted it to be. Um, I think in a way what we have gone through during the past nine months force clients to look at service providers who can do things differently and still deliver a good service quality. So I think in a way it has definitely helped all of us in order to show our innovation, show the return of all the investment we have done in technology uh, in, in our operations and how can that differentiate us from the cheaper service provider, if I'll say. But another point I wanna talk about is the um, cost of operations. So it, it, it's, it's not all good for FM service providers. Just to be a bit realistic, um, like my colleague from IMDAD was saying, if I was supposed to send 30 staff to a certain site, uh, I used to use one bus, now I may need to, to, to use two or three buses and I have to absorb the extra cost. The, the cleaning uh, chemicals that I have to use because now I have to use disinfectants, the PPEs, we all invest so much in, in the gloves and masks every day, accommodation, disinfection, quarantine, the test we provide to our staff. So costs have gone up and we still we are still expected to deliver services better and um, more, more cost efficient. And it's a tough equation. So unless we, we nail it right, it, it's gonna be hard for every service provider to stay on top. Well, let me take that to the next question. I mean, how do you deal with it? I mean, this is, that's the real challenge. Is it technology? Is it trying to figure out how to be lean internally? Because obviously your client's trying to be lean and but you have to be lean. So, I mean, so I'll just keep it back to me. So how do you actually implement these things? Sorry, the question is for me? Yes, I'll take it back to you since you started it. Um, see, the, the premium service providers here in the industry, all of them have invested a lot, like I said, in technology. Uh, all of us, we come on every now and then and say we have this new software, we have this new uh, technology that we brought in, but really anything that we should be investing in should result in efficiencies in our operation. Otherwise, it's just a marketing thing you're putting across. So it is really the time to show our clients the effectiveness of all this and the experience that our team has in order to deliver the good quality with less cost. Um, otherwise, you're going to fall into a trap who's going to be the cheaper and how many staff are you providing. Great. Anybody else? Correct. Um, when, it, when it comes to technology, uh, definitely, uh, as you know, the biggest challenge in our in, uh, in FM operation is the manpower. We are a manpower driven industry. You have thousands of uh, employees. I have, we have in Ijada 11,500 employees today. 
And you can imagine how difficult it was to manage them during uh, during the pandemic, uh, the, to manage their accommodation, the social distancing, quarantine requirements in case of infections, uh, the transportation, as my colleagues mentioned. Uh, so uh, the main driver for technology uh, during the pandemic was for solution that will reduce the dependency on manpower. A lot of uh, technologies in the market still in the pilot projects. And uh, uh, during the pandemic, we've started seeing, uh, we have, uh, the company started speeding the process to utilizing them and deploy them in, during the operation. Some of them were successful, some of them were not, were not proven yet that uh, they are successful. Appreciate that. Mr. Lamantos, sorry, I didn't say that right. Any other comments? It's okay. I am getting used to the, my, to this, <laughs> to my name. Uh, uh, look, the, not not all the heat that FM companies had today was able to be covered by technology. Uh, the FM companies take took a hit, and this is true because, as as Tarek said, uh, although I don't like to use the word product is people services provided by people and during the pandemic people wanted to stay away from people so we <laughs> had the wrong product in the wrong time but uh, but uh, we took a hit i believe all the fem companies uh, they took a hit yes we had our uh, our uh, opportunities but there was a hit also and and there was a hit because we had to be, as our CEO said always, healthcare leaders. We had to take care of our people. We had to be there with them. Even for those idle people, we still had to be there, pay them, support them, and, and be a family to them because we are talking for people that they are 100,000 miles away from their families. There was stress, there was anxiety. Uh, but uh, I believe, as I said earlier, the companies that have put down the foundation the previous years to, to set up a, an, an, an optimized organization as much as possible with regard to process, procedures, technology, uh, I, I, think, I, I think they did very well during the pandemic. Okay. Lakshmanen? See, uh, technology was one of the answers, like, uh, like all my colleagues said, it's a manpower intensive uh, business. Uh, uh, it is to protect the people. Uh, uh, example, one guy in a bus get infected, the entire team of 30 people has to be quarantined for 14 days. So uh, we have been, uh, as like in that, we were able to take six or seven multiple camps to isolate key critical people. So if all the people are serving one of the top bank which we serve, and unfortunately, one guy get infected or, uh, or uh, suspected, the entire team has to be getting isolated. So uh, technology was one solution to a certain extent, but we were trying to identify key critical resources and try to keep away from different places. In certain, certain premises where we serve very big clients, uh, uh, we did tests and the client was good enough, like it's a partnership, they provided accommodation in this building, there will be no cross-contamination if there is in this thing. So we were trying and we have been doing hundreds of tests, even till today. Even I have been tested five times in the organization as part of the requirement. So uh, I think I finished my fifth test. So uh, we were able to do a multiple random tests in spite of the cost are associated because of, like uh, uh, Charlampo said, we have a huge workforce like any other FM company and it is our duty to protect their health and protect the entire resources who serves the client and uh, our our pantry boys, our tea boys, our office boys, our cleaner gets exposed to the client. So we have to protect the client. So technology was one solution, but the agility to change, to find a, a solution, to avoid cross-contamination, because it was very difficult to maintain a social distance between a, a blue-collar worker. So that was a challenge, but hopefully the country was uh, uh, supported as the government supported. We had uh, uh, hospitals visiting the camps to do the tests. So we don't want to send hundreds of people there. So uh, we managed the situation. So it was not only the technology, but different aspects, the process or the system or how far you can react and take up the cost now before it doesn't affect the entire organization. Great, thank you. I would, I would like to, uh, of course, a very good point, Nagan, about uh, the support we, that everybody, the whole community got from the government. Uh, we have to place the government efforts 
uh, on the, on all the levels, yes. all the government bodies. It was fantastic. I think we are very blessed that we live and work in the UAE uh, because uh, what we have seen is unbelievable. It was uh, really very fast, very clear, very efficient, and uh, thank God it was very successful. And till, till today, everybody, I think the whole world is impressed of what uh, the UAE, how the UAE has managed and handled uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Yeah, I will definitely, fourth, fifth, sixth, and tenth, that definitely the case. Um, you can tell by my funny American accent, that's my original home. And you know, I was talking to my son-in-law, talking how crazy it's over even today. And uh, he was impressed by what's going on here. And the same thing, I've been telling people, what we've done here in the UA has been amazing. Um, you know, again, we're quite lucky to live in this country who's compassionate, but also making sure things are done properly. So, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah I feel privileged to, to get to live here. I actually have some really good questions coming in through the chat box and they're actually related. So I'm gonna read, read them off. First one's um, from Fami Hassan. Do developers have a contingency plan to meet service charges fees in case tenant landlords are financially strapped, which relates, relates to the next one. As most of FM clients are, are owners associations, and as always has a dominant effect that the service charges are not paid in time. So how should an FM industry cope with the situation um, when we want to meet a client's expectation as well? Anybody want to address the, the big elephant in the room? I can say something about it. Please. Um, if you opened the news yesterday, or I think the day before on Gulf News, there was an announcement by the authorities that um, there has been new implementation for a law that in order for you to rent your property now, uh, you need to clear your service charges payment. And, and that's only to me the proof on what the government is doing here. So obviously we all had hiccups. There was, there was a time when all of a sudden owners, especially when you talk about JOPD, uh, everyone was not paying their service charges. But right away, there has been a couple of releases by the government on, yes, we're going to be supportive uh, if you have been affected by the pandemic. But on the other hand, if you're not, you need to pay on time. Um, and, and I think that helped us and helped organization management companies uh, quickly to recover the, the, the damage. Uh, because, yes, like the first question came in, Maybe there was not enough fund to, uh, to support for all that, but we all had to work together with what we had to pass through it. And I think to a certain extent, we have gone past the toughest time and now at least everyone has adjusted to the new normal. Anybody else? Yeah. See, uh, regarding the OEA or any other client, uh, I know the question is related to the owner's association, the service fee. As an FM company, like at least in that, we enjoy the benefit of having a solid financial base. So this has allowed us to wait patiently for payments. You know, in some cases, we have waited for months, a quarter, or six months, uh, given the extraordinary circumstances. So we are grateful to be in a position where we can extend this additional service. You know, we never stopped a, a services in any community uh, because of non-payment. But regarding the service fee and the paying on time, like uh, my, my colleague Tamir said, it is, it is very important because every community has to. So this is related to the owner's association part and the uh, requirement. But as a FM company, as a responsible FM company, we were able to support and we understand the client positions and we have been uh, uh, grateful in a position to help uh, most of our clients regarding the payment terms and conditions. We are very, very flexible as we have. Uh, we had the privilege of having a very solid financial base. Great. Yeah, which is I, a very I, important, I, which is a very important point in the selection of the your FM partner. It is very important to, the first thing that any FM client should be looking at is the financials to make sure that the, the, your, the FM company that you are selecting have a strong financial position. Uh, we, are, we, we are, as I said, we are recruiting hundreds or thousands of people. We have to pay salaries on time. We, we have to buy spare parts. We have to buy consumables. We have to pay for the subcontractors. And the last thing do, that you want to do to have is uh, that you have technicians and clinic colleagues working on your site and not getting paid. You are exposed, the morale will be down, you're exposed to strikes, you will have a lot of issues. 
So this is the very important point, the financial stability of the FM partner that you are selecting. I, I completely agree with uh, Nag and Tarek because we also believe that the, the solid financials uh, of an organization is the key to, over, to, to overcome this. And for us, not to pay an employee's salary it is not an, an option. It is not in the map. There is not, there is, it, 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 it never happened in the whole Ashirawi group and it, and, and it will never. But I believe Herrera now is, he has started doing some very nice thing with the escrow and Molac accounts, which will put the full transparency on the, on the transactions between the, the owners, the uh, OAs, the FMs. Unfortunately, the pandemic came. Uh, there was a crisis more there because the banks were not opening any accounts or whatever. But I believe now we are on the right path and, uh, and things only can get better from now onwards. Excellent. Um, another question's come in. The, where does FM merge with technology in a post-COVID environment? We are going towards sustainability processes after all. Simply put, how does technology impact FM in the smartness of cities and future processes? Technology was always a topic hot on when it comes to FM. Uh, be, even before the pandemic, for the past four or five years, everybody in the FM industry was talking about technology. Uh, you have pilot projects all over the world with all the FM companies, whether it is using robotic, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, drones, and uh, we have you know, very successful uh, uh, projects that were implemented and under implementation. As I said before, and as my some of my colleagues mentioned, the pandemic speed up the process of the implementation. That um, we, we some, some some projects were put on fast track to uh, start uh, the the field field operation of of these uh, 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 technologies. I'll give you a small example that we have. We have is the we have a we have the first of its kind, a security patrolling robot that will replace uh, will will complement uh, the man guarding, uh, but will replace a number of man guards by uh, uh, by a security robot. Uh, this project started a couple of years ago. It was uh, piloted at the beginning of the beginning of the year, and now we are implementing it because you want to you want to reduce the dependency on on the manpower. Uh, predictive maintenance, uh, the command centers, uh, drones technologies, artificial intelligence, sensors, all of these, every single company that is uh, working in FM, uh, the number of emails that I'm sure every one of us uh, are receiving every day from companies from all over the world, offering technologies, offering softwares, offering uh, sensors, artificial intelligence uh, solutions, so definitely, def that uh, t technology is a very hot topic in FM industry. But how do you choose which one? I mean, if you're getting bombarded, how do you make the decision on technology? I'm going to ask all four of you this question. Uh, go ahead, Tarek, you can finish up there. It's, okay. It's, okay. That's a selection. Of course, we have we have our uh, we have a committee, a research and development committee. Uh, but we have multiple departments. We have consultants that are working with us. Uh, to select uh, to select the right solution, we do pilot project. We select we partner with our clients. We select uh, a building a suitable building for a technology, and we do the implementation. And once it's proven successful, we we enroll it. Uh, we start offering it to our to our clients. Uh, I I believe each organization is different on the way it it operates, both on the back office, also on on the field, and the process it it, it has. So. You just study uh, your current structure, the, your processes, and everything. And for example, we we discovered that we had, uh, as as an example, we discovered that we had an an issue with a specific process in our head office. So we implemented immediately an RPA, a robotic process automation, uh, which actually solved our problem. So it is case by case, client by client, because the requirement differs. So there is not a, a standard way. I mean, we are going to use this. No. Sometimes it is also a combination with multiple technologies together in order to get the right out. I agree with uh, Tarik and uh, Charlambos. 
uh, it is the uh, situation the type of the uh, technology technology is an integral part of facilities management for any company the adoption of technology is based on pilots based on the results you can install thousands of sensors you can put an iot platform how you are going to implement it along with the field services how it is going to get captured how it is going to get workflow getting tuned so uh, in many cases Uh, certain clients wanted a standalone platform so uh, like a organization like in that we need to integrate a huge workforce as 7000 8000 people uh, we can get hundreds of uh, iot sensors installed the, the the processes to convert into a workflow getting up knowledge getting it closed so it involves multiple layer of technologies uh, apis across the technologies to be integrated then the suitability and the scalability you know there may be a small pilot can be successful when it comes to uh, scalability then there will be a question mark so every company we work on different technologies like uh, uh, rpa on the hr side or on the iot or the ai ml like tarik said we have hundreds of even today morning there was one guy showing a demo about an iot thing so we get hundreds of demos hundreds of these things every company is working on pilots and it may take uh, a considerable time and analysis to adopt one particular technology and scale it across the operations great tamir yeah I, i definitely agree with all my colleagues here technology is the core of any every service provider but what i would like to point out to it it's not just about technology it's what do you do with this technology great. i think there is so much that can be done with the basic technology of fm rather than investing in the latest and the best plus you have to take in consideration that you have to have a client that is also willing to explore this route with you uh, smart cities is the future and and we at concord they were lucky that we work with some of the key clients that have this vision so we were able to implement um, such an initi- initiative with them but getting back to my point again with a simple cafm you can do so much if you just analyze this data and do actually something with it then rather than just accumulating data with your sensors sensors with your cafm so yes technology is key but i think the most important thing that you have the expertise and the people that can actually use this technology and use this data to come up with fm models that will actually benefit the client i disagree tamir uh, okay. the technology should do this role not your people if you have uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence you will get the results why do you need people to do the analysis if you have a machine that can do the analysis for you well actually i'll step in there i know in my industry in the property side we get lots of data big data the computer does a lot of the numberings but it takes a human still yet to interpret what these means and how they interact with all these other variables so uh, you, you still need the human element but you know you can you let technology do all the the hard number crunching all the statistics and all that stuff this is this is what is changing uh, this is exactly yeah. what's changing human interference and in this is not required anymore the, so, the, actually, the, the analysis of the big data the analysis of big data it doesn't require a human interference at all this is the future that we will start seeing that we started seeing and will be we seeing in the in the near future within the coming two years let me ask this uh, question then if, I, how if, do, if, where if, are you going to be two years if, from now? if you may allow me for a, if, okay if, if you may allow me on this i agree with tarek but uh, people think that you know technology is replacing people no technology needs people you just utilize the people to do more innovative and and exactly. and, and constructive things and you take them out for you know uh, man hours which can be easily done by by an an, an rpa process or or an ar xr or, or or vr so it's not like you implementing to remove people you are complement to make complement to make people's life easier at work and and let them deal with more important things yes. than the one that takes time okay so, so people will lose jobs but new jobs also are created so if you, you i'm sure i'm sure that you, you we have children and we read a lot of articles about which profession your children should be uh, should be specializing in what universities do you our, i don't think our kids will be uh, looking to be uh, doctors and uh, engineers like our generation so we will have people specialize maybe a robot doctor or somebody who will <laughs> do the, the data analysis and this type of this type of 
of uh, professional there are me... a lot of articles and uh, researches about the, about this the future of education well let me ask this question and again as an academic this is the problem we're having is sex school leavers don't think of fm property management and real estate as careers which is why yes. they're pretty much only offered at the postgrad level and these are people who've already gotten into the industry now need a qualification how do we attract school leavers into our professions? I mean, these are professions they don't traditionally think about. Uh, I, if, 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 if you allow me, I think Please. that uh, uh, the, the market has to be mature enough in order to move to the next level is how do we adopt this specific business for as, as a career ob ob objective? As, as Tarek said, and my colleague said earlier, uh, the FM in the region, the last year has, has matured enough, but five, six, seven, eight years ago, it was nowhere, uh, or, or, or at least it, it, it was not as it is right now. Now that we have an ISO, which has framed the quality where all the companies have to offer as, as a baseline, I believe that uh, in the next couple of years, we will move to the maturity phase where we can uh, also propose and, and induct the FM or the PM as a career objective to various schools and education institutes. Great. Um, I, actually, I agree. And I think um, if you look at, at Dubai as a city or the UAE in, in general, um, with the assets aging, now, there's going to be higher and higher demand for FM. Uh, maybe at the beginning you were able to, to get along because your assets were new, but now with the aging assets, you would require from facilities management much more. And some of the technologies that might be very effective in other parts of the world may not be cost efficient here. And, and that's what we're doing every day. We're assessing those technologies. Uh, some of them work really well in, in Europe, for example, but that they're not efficient in this part of the world. So I think, yes, to a big extent, uh, FM is something to look at in the future as, as, a, as a dominant industry or, or, or career. And I think it's gonna be more and more in demand in places like Dubai because you have, you have so much around you. If you look around you, all these properties, they have to be maintained. The, the, the assets uh, lifetime has to be ex expanded to, to the max. Agree. Um, I think we have about five minutes left. I got a question here um, from, is there any way to address the concern authorities regarding issuance of advance payments to any approved coded works? In some homeowners associations, they, they always use an excuse, the, the Moloch system. We're in stating that the Moloch is not issuing advance payments for any approved quotes LPO. I'm totally lost. I'm hopefully you guys understand that. Mr. Lakshman? Yeah, see, uh, uh, Malak is the new system where the owners of uh, OA companies have to upload the service payments of the different FM companies like Imdad or uh, uh, different companies. So it goes to the, the Malak system is administered by uh, RIRA. So the system is in early phases of implementation, like uh, Charlampo said, uh, the pandemic came. So there was a little delay, uh, uh, even in the payment, with the, for the completed works, there were delay in payments. I think the audience, uh, one of the question was about the advanced payment. So the system, the early glitches are solved and all the pending payments are cleared in the OA system uh, and the Bolak system, which, is, which manages the payment for the FM companies by the OA. I think the situation will improve. Then they will be able to relook into the advanced payment uh, because at the end of the day, the, the money belongs to the residents. So uh, what is the process for advanced payment? whether they have to give a bank guarantee or what happened. So because the, the, the money owned by in the Malak system is a collective money of all the residents. So the process may take little time, but for sure, there will be a process for making advanced payment in the Malak system. 100% taking into consideration also that Malak system is still relatively new. Uh, it's a great it's a great effort by RIRA, but it will take some time. It will, they will have, they will issue uh, new versions that will address all uh, uh, the community's requirements. Uh, Nagan mentioned a very important point that advanced payment is uh, re require proper governance and proper process and not maybe not all the OA companies and the OA management companies are uh, equipped to to, uh, 
to to handle this. Uh, as an example, in our company, we if we if we're paying a advance payment for a subcontractor, we request some type of guarantee, whether it's a bank guarantee or a check. It depends on the uh, on the size of the payment, of course. The okay, amount. we're down to our last uh, four minutes. So I'm going to give one final question to each of you. Where do you see FM in say 2025? Secretary Tarek, go ahead and start. 20, um, again, I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, the FM uh, is progressing very well, especially in the in the UAE. Uh, we in 2025 we will see an implement, implementation of beautiful technologies in FM that will complement uh, the rise of the FM sectors, the new developments that are were developed uh, and were delivered and. Uh, under delivery and uh, the future is very bright. Great, appreciate it. Tamir? I, I, I definitely agree, like I said before, because the UAE has so much premium assets and so much investment has been done into the real estate development here, I see that the FM market will have more opportunities than ever. Um, and I think also that in a couple of years, uh, the market is going to mature and you're going to have only premium service providers around. All these small players eventually will have to, to fall apart sooner or later. Right. Uh, Charlo Montos, Pump, ah, go ahead. Uh, I'm not going to comment my name, it's okay. Please. <laughs> uh, I believe FM was one of the industries that has been, uh, uh, that has been affected a lot from COVID. I believe this heat made us wiser, made us find weight and challenge ourselves to perform better and smarter in order to uh, stay safe through this crisis. So I can only see beautiful days come in the future for FM industry uh, for the days and years to come. Great. Mr. Lakshman? Yeah, I have, we are very optimistic like we said, even during the pandemic, we were able to perform more. The clients understood the importance of working with quality service providers and paying the right price to get the uh, business continuity in, intact. Uh, like the, my colleague said, uh, uh, we will be working in 2025 with much more advanced technologies. Uh, maybe there may be a full-fledged integration between the BIM and the CAFM systems. So when the construction industry may choose with the building information modeling, the uh, the the life side, the the uh, easy, ease of working in the uh, FM sector may become the FM will mature and uh, we are very optimistic and there will be a big rise in FM, smart FM. Great. Well, that leaves us at the end. I want to thank you all. Um, this has been a great session and uh, hopefully Donna is going to kick, kick in here and soon and, and finish us off. Donna, are you back? Maybe she's not. <laughs> yes, we can uh, close the discussion if uh, you know if you're ready, and yep. uh, we'll be starting the next session soon. Great, thank you all. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.